Yeah. Okay, honey. Kitty kind of rules the house, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's got hair on her. <laughs> We're all likely to outlive our parents, but when our parents die, most of us do not get sentenced to live in regimented institutions. Years ago, the medical profession and overprotective parents believed that when aging parents could no longer care for their children with disabilities, it was best to place them in state institutions. Then they were sent to nursing homes. Then group living seemed to be the answer. People with disabilities have taught us the obvious. They have the same vision of adult life as everyone else does. A chance to live as independently as possible in their own home, to control who comes in through the door, to work at a real job, and to be surrounded by friends. Person-centered planning and new technology is making this easier to do. Let's give everyone a chance to try. Don, Robert, and their cat, Honey, chose to live with one another. Don and Robert have lived in institutions for many years, and then in several group homes. This is our family. Yeah, I like it. Donald, yeah. Robert. Yeah. Who's this? Honey. Honey? Honey. And mom and dad. Yeah, yeah, even my mom and dad. Yeah. Don's parents, Leela and Don Bauer Sr., are pioneers in the areas of full community participation. They've been completely supportive in helping Don live in his own home with his friend Robert. Thanks to good planning, truly targeted to their own preferences, they now control their lives. They hire, fire, and give their own staff directions. Each is working at a job in the community where they have friends, and they use the public transportation system as well as anyone. There were uh, times back when Donald was having a lot of seizures and, and basically couldn't do anything but be taken out with us and everything. Sometimes we would have to hang on him and wore a helmet. Lord, I, the most I ever hoped for was him just to be able to get out of the house and get out in the community. And here he is, he's surviving by himself and cooking for himself and riding the bus himself and knows where he wants to go. Now, what do you boys do <coughs> when the alarm goes off? Uh, oh. Go out the door. Oh, out the door, yeah. That's real good. That's very important when you want to live alone, that you know how to, yeah. to deal with the fire alarm. Yeah. Just show them what, how you get 911. What happens if you push that? Please, hey. please come for huh. and help you. His mother's number on their program yeah and staff and sister yeah all right i think that's the trouble with us parents we have a tendency to be overprotective i feel like i had to give up and break down and do a lot of things but it's been all for his benefit because it's really hard to let loose and i think that's still out there today and i think that the folks that keep their our disabled individuals with them through the years longer than we did even they have even a harder time if you break loose when they're in their early teens, even there, though they may be very young, that's the easiest part. It's easier for the individual and it's actually easier for the parents. Yeah. We're younger and you can cope with more than you can if you're in your, your 80s. I would hate to think about taking it on then. The thought of him going to his own home and surviving in his own home, I thought would never happen. I had my doubts. I was, I'm a doubting Thomas. I didn't think it was going to work. I had so many ifs and ands. But after we got into the uh, circle of friends and looking closer at Donald, what he can do when he has the opportunity and given the opportunity instead of saying he can't do it and do it for him. And he does very well. <laughs> Is this your bro? Yeah, uh huh? Mm hmm. Yeah, queen. What's your favorite book? Oh, Robo Queen. 
train books is your favorite Queen book. Well, that yeah. sure is a nice mm -hmm. train book that Queen you picked book. out. Okay. Yep. You spend hours looking at that yeah. book and reading mm -hmm. about trains, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I like Queen Book. Okay. Yep. It wasn't only a few weeks, and Donald let me know he knew better than I did about putting his sleep apnea machine on. He wanted to do it himself. He wouldn't even let me put it on for him. Doesn't want staff to put it on. They have to go home, and then you do it. Is that right, Danny? Yeah. That's right. There's, I don't think there's any limit to what the guys can do anymore. I'll go to the garden like this, so yeah, the gourmet girl cook. You like yeah. to watch the so gourmet cook? Yeah. yeah. I understand. This is, this is one of your doing other doing it very um, simply, just like boys you boys do. Oh, uh, go. What's up? Uh, Pops all done. done? Yeah. How, how many hours a day are staff here? Um, Come at four. It could be more. Pete be here a little more. Well, yeah, more. More. Four. And what time do they leave? Leave. Good. Eight. 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 Yeah. Eight. Mm -hmm. eight so more. They're here yeah. from four to eight, eight in the afternoon. What time do they come in the morning? Six, Six o'clock. Good. Uh, and then we go at what time? Eight. Eight. After everybody's gone to work. Home. And they go home. Um, me too. You pick your staff. Yeah, That's right. pick my staff. You pick your staff. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like what they're doing, what can you do? If you have a way home. Send them home. Send them home. <laughs> what be, would you do if they didn't? I'll be that way. Your, what's your famous word if they're not doing right? What happens if you don't do your job right? Go home. Fired. Fired. Fired is yeah. your famous word. Yeah. He tells home. that to staff more than yeah. once. More. <laughs> One Mother's Day, we all got together, our daughter from Novi, and, and uh, we met here in Ann Arbor, and we all went out to dinner. And then afterwards, uh, we, we didn't have dessert, so Donald wanted to get dessert and bring it back here and serve it in his own home. How proud he was to serve us in his own home. And he dished it up and cut the cake and the entire thing for us. Do it. Fabrics, Joy and Fabrics. We're really glad to have Donnie working with us. And um, he's been a real asset to us as far as uh, keeping our floors clean and everything. And um, I don't have a lot of staff right now, so it's real, it's been beneficial for us to have him come through and uh, clean our floors and do our trash for us. It's things that we can't get to right now. And he's easy to work with. He's very pleasant and um, real helpful. And uh, he says thank you an awful lot. So it's real good for us as a company. So. Don't you think everybody should be able to work? Yeah. That's an important part of your life, isn't it? Yeah. How would you feel if you didn't get to go to work, Don? Mm. Sad. Sad? Yeah. Well. Makes you feel good to be productive and yeah, you know, and making money too. Yeah, uh, is that important to you? Yeah, I thought so. To all of us. Many times, people at school, in schools believe or lead parents to believe that people don't have the capacity to work. They believe in things that are as outlandish these days as mental age and those kinds of things. When really, what we have to look at is what can people do, not what their limitations are, not what their disabilities are. What can people do? Holiday Inn. You work at Holiday Inn. That's right. Time and five weeks. That's right. Four. How many floors do you have to vacuum? Five floors. Five floors. Top and bottom. Top and bottom. What happens if you miss them? We get, we get boot camp. You go to boot camp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robert has worked off and on here for about nine years. Uh, he's been doing the vacuuming for about two and a half years. At first, he had an intensive job coach that came in and worked with him um, through his whole shift. And then when he was ready to be um, seen by me, follow along coach, um, I come in about twice, twice a week and see how he's doing. He has a lot of uh, support here at Holiday Inn, which is very important and a good supervisor. Yeah. yeah, somehow you always beat me over here, though. I don't know how you, you know, take the shortcut. I've been knowing Bob for about nine years. We worked together, and he's a nice guy. His favorite thing in the kitchen was coming through and getting chicken fingers and vanilla ice cream. You know, what? He get along great with everyone here. He come through every morning. 
very a nice smile. Hello, good morning. Hi, Bob. He's a real nice guy. We just love working with him. Becky's life revolves around her career at Zingerman's, which is Ann Arbor's most popular delicatessen. Zingerman's has a strong sense of social responsibility as part of their mission. Their aim is not just to sell deli items. They want to make their customers smile, and Becky has played an important role in this for 10 years. Everybody gets kind of excited when Becky shows up for her shift, and you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a time to stop, and everybody says, you know, hi, Becky, and are you ready to go out today? Singerman's even named a sandwich after her. Becky, do you enjoy your job here at Singerman's? Yeah, look the table. Yeah. Playing the table. It's more a pleasure and a learning experience for us every day. Um, I think Becky has a unique effect on every day that she's here. She just comes in and speaks with guests and maybe teaches us a little bit about uh, diverse lives. Mm -hmm. To Becky, work means regular contact with people without disabilities doing something truly useful where she is appreciated. It means the support of lots of people. Becky recently lost her father. One of the things that we've learned is that when people have other supports in the community, and that occurs before they lose a parent, mm -hmm. then uh, that's really significant for people. The morning supervisors, um, or the people who supervise in the cafe, had come to me um, when things were happening with her dad and said, we're really, really worried about Becky. We don't want her to stop working here. And she, when she's upset, sometimes she clicks her nails. And they had said that that increased a little bit. But um, what I noticed was that they were spending a lot more time with Becky. And her job coach was able to come in. And I'm not sure if it was more getting her mind off it, or, but she was able to keep up kind of a, her routine, which is very important to her. And, uh, I think what she found was that a lot of people were there for her, that um, it, was, it was helpful and it was, it was very interesting to watch her go through and in a sense I think we all went through it together and it, it taught us a lot. Uh oh, probably all set there, huh? You want to ring it out? She's probably the hardest working, I mean. She comes in every day and is extremely diligent. And she has mm -hmm. her routine down, and she really sets an example for most of the staff. Any one of us appreciates the friendly involvement of our co-workers. Why should people with disabilities be any different? Every day you come in, you see uh, Eliza and Nicole. You guys get ready to get out and work on the floor. Work on the floor. Every, every day, like clockwork, she, she comes in. Clockwork. Like clockwork, huh? Mm-hmm. Your mom was kind of stuck between believing what the professionals said um, and then what she wanted for you. And yeah. so we had to have some meetings, didn't we, over time? And, but your mom was one of your strongest supporters. And your mom, once she learned what you wanted and that it was possible, she helped make sure you didn't go to a nursing home, that you didn't stay in an institution, right? Rayford was in a state institution for many years and then in a nursing home where he met Debbie. It took a doctor from the community who knows Rayford to insist that he could live in his own apartment. In spite of his serious medical condition, there was no reason for Rayford to be in a nursing home his level of disability should not have been an obstacle to living in the home of his choice. Ray, was good, Ray's good to you? Yeah, he's a very good person. Oh, I know he's a good person. Yeah, but I try to help what he needs. I advocate for Ray. That's what it means to be husband and wife, huh? Advocate. You're an advocate for your husband and for yourself and for other people with disabilities. Right. 
Rayford and Debbie are now married. They have their own place and staff, their version of the American dream. Hello, Rayford. These are pictures from Ray and Debbie's wedding. One of them there, you were getting to the point of cutting the cake. There were lots of relatives there. It was a very happy occasion. They both have lots of friends, so we filled our entire conference room. And this is their record of pictures they chose to, to keep from that day. In the mornings, um, we do have to get them up and get them cleaned up, get them dressed. Um, Ray, Ray gets his feedings, Debbie gets breakfast. Are you comfortable right there, Ray, like in that position? Um, after they have gotten situated, what we do is we, try, we pick up the, the homes, we do the laundry, we do the dishes, you know, we basically clean up, make sure everything is in, as neat as possible, and um, fixing their, their meals and making sure they get their meds. Rayford made the decision to have a a tube installed after consulting with doctors and other things. Ray is an activist. He's gone to Washington, D.C. to protest. He's done the kinds of things that are necessary to make sure everybody's alerted to the rights of people with disabilities. Uh, making sure that they're not subject to euthanasia through uh, physician-assisted suicide, to making sure that everybody else gets the opportunity to live in their own places. They've got clippings of activism here. They're activists in the truest sense of the word. Um, Debbie is, is wearing a, a sweatshirt from ADAPT. Yeah. I did that. Yes. What, what did Deb, you do? Deb was, the, uh, Deb was the leader of a campaign to get um, the, um, accessible entrance yeah. to the building. Right. To make sure that, that not only could people with disabilities live there, but people with disabilities could visit other people. I hope you get out where I want to. The entrance wasn't accessible, although no. the landlord claimed it was. Uh, so uh, Debbie led the campaign. It was a long campaign. Our agency worked with it and others to, yeah. to actually get it made accessible. Um, so that people with disabilities could not only use it, right. but use it for visiting, uh, use it all weather, yep. and everything else. So, so that, that was a campaign that had to be undertaken before we had a truly accessible place. And there's also a button out here. So if they're coming down from the ramp from, from the handicapped spot that's in the parking lot, they would come down all the way down this ramp all of this was built for them and then they would push this button here and then the door was open. I did it a fight for three years. Three years, that fight went on. I didn't give up either. No, you didn't. I won. You clearly won. <laughs> Gail's life is a testimony to how far people can go if they just don't hold them back. While Gail doesn't speak well, she does write. And her gestures, as well as her smile, say even more than words. Gail was rescued from a nursing home and placed in a group home. But she clearly did not want to stay there. This is Gail's Trixie lift. This is one of the big pieces of equipment that Gail uses in order to transfer her. This piece of equipment is very important in Gail's life because it does uh, allow her to transfer safely and comfortably. You've been the lead staff of the manager of the yes, staff? Yes, I have. And, and McKee's also your friend, right? Yes! Okay. But let me ask you the question, um, who's the boss? Mm -hmm. You. Okay. And so you're the boss of your staff? Mm -hmm. You're the boss in your apartment? Mm -hmm. Boss of your own life? All right, good, good. Is that how you want it to be? You've lived in places before where um, other people were the boss, didn't you? Would you ever think about going back to a group home or a, or even worse, a nursing home? No. All right. I don't think we'd let that happen.
This is Gail's kitchen. This is where Gail's meals are prepared. And sometimes Gail, will, she has room to come in to watch and to, to chat with the staff as they're helping to prepare her meal. I coordinate uh, the things that Gail needs as far as her daily living skills and, and um, just the different things. No two days are alike. Uh, there are no, there's no meal schedule or uh, an outing schedule. You know, it's whatever Gail wakes up and feels like doing or whatever she wants is, you know, we adhere to that. The way the rest of us live our lives, right? Exactly. And they're just here to assist in, in those daily, daily duties. Is Gail a good boss? Gail was a great mm. boss. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gail now chooses where and with whom to live. She's completed an art program at a local community college. She's searching for a career and she's contemplating marriage. Gail is in control. And now you're thinking about um, joining the world of work. That's that your next goal. And you'd like to use what you've learned in school, use what your training was at the community college. So you want a job in, in the art field? Okay. Because right. that's, you, you took art and you took computers, that kind of stuff. Right. Gail, you said that people should be encouraged to live their own lives and get their own places and things. What would you say to moms and dads who worry about their sons and daughters um, making their own decisions and living in their own places? Um, what, would, what should we say to them? Gail says, give them a chance to try. What people need to understand, especially parents, is that this is possible for everyone. The level of disability, medical needs, they don't matter. What matters is early planning, giving people a chance, allowing people to express and, and uh, show their capacities and their abilities. Limitations mean far less than letting people rise to the occasion to get their piece of the American dream. Letting people have lives past the lives of their parents. That's all any of us can ask.